Well, apologies in advance if some of the footage looks a little contrasty. Normally I wouldn't shoot on such a bright and sunny day as this, but it is a beautiful day on the farm. And since this isn't me in front of the camera, you won't have to be uh, treated to my squinting eyes and sweaty face as we do a warm day on the farm. You can see here that I have lots of plants left in the greenhouse here. And maybe that's not the best thing if you're running a, a nursery business and it's the month of July. A lot of these were started from seed or started from cuttings this year and some were ready on time to be attractive for sale and then others weren't but because I'm growing perennials for the most part I'm going to say that everything that I have on the ground here right now will be fine to hold on to for another year and then of course there'll be no question about whether I'll have them ready for first thing in the season that's an English lavender there uh, some of them of course that I've cut down after the first flush of blooms and uh, I'm just holding them and bringing them back into condition. We still will have a bit of straggling plant sales going into the fall. Uh, and I intend to stay open. I intend to stay open Fridays and Saturdays. It's no harm uh, keeping the doors open since I'm going to be here on the farm anyway. Uh, you can see the plants are starting to look really beautiful. Look at that. That's a, a, a dark magic sedum. And behind it, that's a perennial geranium, a pelargonium, with those little tiny flowers. Gorgeous. Uh, great for a hanging basket or that kind of thing. Of course, like this for containers as well. We almost sold out on some of the varieties here. This uh, Agastache Kudos Yellow is just about sold out. Uh, we have the Paris Blue Lavender down to four pots. Uh, the Salmon Dianthus, just based on the strength of kind of a cool color that sold out really well but this is what's left in the main greenhouse and as we were growing in the main greenhouse one other thing I'll say is that if they became ready in the main greenhouse here I would move them outdoors and put them into a garden bed out there so that they would hold a little bit better in the colder weather here in the greenhouse it's a little bit warmer and that's great for early development of plants, but if you're trying to hold them in good condition, it's better to move them outdoors where they're hardened off and ready to go into people's gardens and also are just growing a little bit slower, take up a little bit less water and are just an, a little bit easier to manage. So let's go out and see those outdoor beds now. You can see that one thing we've done is we've set up a lot of these pathways around the yard. Now, of course, if the visitors to the farm know where they're going they can cut right through and not bother with the pathways but it's just a way of letting people know what's around the farm and we have all this signage in the background that will show them where they're going so these are the outdoor beds i talked about and one thing that came up in the viewer comments of that tour we did in the fall when we we're talking about doing this was we should have benches and signage and here we are benches and signage just to let people know hey you can come here you can sit down uh, you're allowed to be here they just sort of signal and that's the same with the pathways as well it just adds definition and kind of funny at the back corner here you're going to see sort of a post and chain sort of corner on the edges of this perennial area serves no function at all except just to define the space sort of gives people the idea uh, yes you're allowed to be here and this is the definition of the space so that people don't feel like they're intruding and that was one of the problems is because we this is our home as well as our uh, our business we don't want people to feel like they're sort of stepping on our toes by being here that's a similar concept to what you're going to see coming here and this is our newest garden feature well the rose garden's been here a while but this garden here we're calling it the the s garden it's a curved garden it sort of leads people down towards the boulevard there and towards the rose garden and we tried doing this with a reed fencing and that didn't last very long uh, i should say the reed fencing held up just fine it wasn't a quality issue it was the fact that once we put that up and started seeing how it worked in, in practice, then we got a different idea about what we wanted to do here. So you can see, I'm going to aim the camera up a little bit here. Hopefully you can see the sort of 
patio lights that Lisa has strung on the back here. That's part of uh, just dressing it up a little bit. And then for each of these sections in the garden, we've placed these, uh, well, I guess treated boards. It sort of matches the privacy boards that are on the side of our back deck there. So it makes it theme nicely. And what Lisa's concept was when she thought of this, she looked at the whole bed and said, you know, we were gonna landscape this all with tall wavy grasses and some lavender and just sort of do the whole thing in one theme. But she thought, you know what? We're a rose nursery, we're trying to sell plants. One of the things we may do here is we may be able to convince people of what plants to purchase or what plants to consider. So think of this now like an Ikea showroom. Each one of these back walls here represents a room in the garden. The first one there, if you saw on the piece of green tape, said color. And uh, being that it's so close to the front of the garden here, the idea that it should have colorful perennials, colorful annuals, something to draw the eye makes a lot of sense from a design point of view. The next one here, we're going to theme it to texture. And in this case, talking about bold foliage, fine foliage, different textured plants, different textured flowers. Uh, the third one that she wanted to go with, well, it says uh, symmetry. And uh, that's not my handwriting, so don't blame any spelling errors on me. But uh, the idea for this section would be to have some plants that have kind of a, a form, almost topiary or conifers or something like that, that just sort of allows for a, a structure within the plants. This next one is the idea to invite nature into the garden. Uh, I was thinking insectary might be the nice word because I'm, you know how I feel about adding beneficial insects into the garden. So this section here, again, as a room, will have a bunch of pollinator plants and plants that attract beneficial insects into the garden. Uh, next one here, we're gonna set up as a patio, almost designing it like as if a viewer or a visitor uh, only has a patio. We'll put some decking on the ground. We'll put some container plants and we'll just make this look as if we're designing it as a patio. So the next one here, and of course it's got the archway in it, and we're gonna call that one structure. And we're gonna talk about having uh, vertical structures in the area and uh, sort of bringing up some, uh, showing off the garden with a little bit of height and, uh, and metal or wooden structures. Next one here, as a design concept, we chose fragrance. So we'll be choosing plants that add fragrance to the garden. And so hopefully people will be stepping in and sniffing a little bit. And the final one here, we're gonna call movement. And I, I thought for this one here that we would do some tall wavy grasses uh, and other plants that move in the wind or show some kind of movement. I don't know, maybe a water feature too. We'll see what happens there. So people walking over this way now have been brought to our boulevard, which is sort of one of our main design points of the garden. And you can see it's kind of in bloom right now. My apologies, we have let it go a little bit during the summer here. We've had uh, a lot of mosquitoes in the area, so I've had a limited amount of time for weeding out here. But it's got the Estrantia, salvia in the back, some daylilies. Isn't that a bright plant? Look at that, that's Lysimachia alexander. And of course, if you're peeking out this way, you're gonna see the stock field of roses, which is sort of the highlight of the shopping experience as far as I'm concerned, where people can come through, have a look at the roses in the landscape, see their ultimate size and shape and color, fragrance, and see the mature plant rather than just dealing with a plant in the pot. Here's the rose garden. have some things that are, you know, here we are and we're in July and just remarkably so. This rose here is still an old centifolia and still in bloom. I mean, we've had a very cold spring and it slowed everything down. So we actually have this moss, William Lobb, in bloom at the same time as many of our 
floribundas and hybrid tea roses. In fact, you know, this uh, Playboy is basically through its first flush and that's done before the old garden roses are even finished in the garden now. Fellowship or also known as Living Easy. In the back there, Morden Ruby. William Shakespeare 2000. The visitors come out here. Once again, they get to see the garden in all its glory. And then that segues to the greenhouse that's right behind it. And yeah, I'll just walk you that direction because that's where we have the roses that are for sale. This used to be uh, grape arbors and I've taken those down now and took uh, the advice of viewers who said it'd be better if you were displaying your roses. I think that's a good idea. So we put on, oh, six climbing roses now that will be climbing these uh, boards and being trained horizontally for best flowering. And since you're getting the behind the scenes tour here, I'll peek my head into this greenhouse over here where you're going to see that I've continued to add to my collection of miniature roses that I'm propagating for upcoming seasons. And here in this greenhouse are some new mother plants and some other stock that we're working on doing some propagation. Actually, it's a nice environment with the shady poly in here for doing a good amount of propagation. So maybe I'll answer the question now about how the season went. Well, it went about as, as expected. By the way, we have gone away from piling our debris and burning it. This is the area where we're using to chip the wood debris now. And I showed you that I have a new wood chipper that I've been using for this. It's holding up okay. It's doing the job. Lisa set up this area for refreshments. It's not open right now, but slides open that door. She has uh, cold drinks for people over here. And of course, if you're gonna invite people, the public to your farm, you're gonna have, yes, a washroom. Sort of makeshift, I have to say. Uh, it's not plumbed into anything. But here we are. We have a portable sink, portable composting toilet, and lights that light up when the doors close. I mean, once again, it's not anything fancy, but you know, people who have driven a ways to get here, maybe the thing they want really is just a place to pee. And because the concession is kind of right there, where we have the refreshments, we've set up a little picnic area over here. At least his goal, ideally, is to have people feel like they can maybe bring their kids here, enjoy the day, have this as a bit of a tourist experience. Uh, one thing that's been kind of a, a pain for that is that we're in mosquito season now. So if I walked you into the shady area there, I would immediately be beset by many, many mosquitoes. Uh, so, let me give you the lowdown on that real quick. At the background here of this whole scene, way at the back there, you see a row of trees. On the other side of those trees is the Fraser River. And the Fraser River obviously goes up when the snow from the mountain all melts. And uh, it reaches its peak, and when it does that, it reaches the breeding grounds of a whole bunch of mosquitoes. There's a couple of varieties of serious pest mosquitoes that are in our area. And I'm gonna show you a map here as well, just as, a, as an interesting thing to me, that we are kind of in the dead in the middle of the mosquito breeding ground. So once that water reaches them, they hatch and you get adult mosquitoes here within a short order. And those adult mosquitoes last for about a month. So the municipality, or the, in this case, the regional district, does some spraying of BTI, 
which is sort of a biological insecticide that will stop the babies from breeding in those, in those pools uh, that are left behind by the river. And they say they reduce the mosquito severity by about 90%, which I have to say, if this is only 10% of how bad it could be, I can't believe how it would be if all of them came out. So uh, thank you for the spraying. And uh, so now that 10% that came out is still a fairly large number and we've got them here. We've had them here for about two weeks and we have about two more weeks before the mosquito populations subside. So I guess that's the joys of living in a natural area is that you have to deal with the ebbs and flows of rivers and nature and populations of pest species like mosquitoes. So, you know, on an average Friday, average Saturday, you know, I wouldn't see it very busy in here. Um, you know, even in the peak of the season, we maybe only would see five or six cars in the parking lot at a time. And, you know, your average sales for a day on a Friday might be below a thousand dollars and your average sales for a day on a Saturday, even through the peak of the season, was probably only about, uh, say, $1,200, something like that. So those numbers are not like knock your socks off kind of numbers. Uh, keeping in mind that we also had a few years of experience in this, so we had selling events off the farm as well. Went to see uh, a lot of garden clubs to sell plants and we also were selling online and for those people who bought plants online they could pick them up here on the farm or I offered a, a sort of a limited delivery service to see how that would go. Heck right now we're just in the process of throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks if you know what I mean by that expression is that we're going to try everything Lisa and I to try to make some financial sense out of running the nursery here and you know, we're not disappointed with the results. I think some people, because of our local area, had a very, very cool spring. And some of the other garden centers were just kind of waiting on a good year and they didn't have it. And we were kind of in that privileged position of having no expectations going into our year. We didn't know what to expect, but we kind of did enough uh, in terms of sales that the whole thing made sense and that we're gearing up to do it again for the next year. Just want to show you here again. I know I've run the tour kind of in backwards, but I'm running, I can show you the, uh, the initial parking lot here. This is where people would first arrive on the property and they would see the sales shed and the gift cart. And I might have some better footage to insert for that. And then we would have, we're trying to beautify the area here. It was a little bit overgrown, but we're working on it now. We have, uh, well, this is a beautiful rose. This is Guilain de Felagond as a rambler and as ramblers might do. This one's kind of leaning into the uh, driveway and so I'll have to support that one up, but done a little bit of work here on the front end, just trying to get rid of the weeds. Although you may spot one or two still in there and kind of make the whole area look good. I mean, I'm, one of the goals here, once again, is to have people drive here and sort of look around at sort of a park-like setting and decide, well, would I like to come in? Maybe I'll stay, maybe I'll have a picnic. Maybe we'll take some photos. Uh, maybe we'll bring the dog, maybe we'll bring the kids, that kind of thing. So that's the hope here. That's the goal and, and Lisa's, uh, if it were up to me, we wouldn't have anything cute in the garden, but you know, Lisa's, uh, dressing it up that way too. So uh, anyway, just wanted to show you what we've done so far. And, you know, especially as regards that first part of the tour where you saw that curved garden and the different rooms that were setting up sort of like Ikea showrooms. If you would uh, rewatch that part and give me any suggestions that you have. I mean, we're not set on those titles, uh, those rooms, those themes. And we're certainly not set on which plants are going there yet so would absolutely love to hear your suggestions on what to do as we uh, expand our offerings here on fraser valley rose farm thanks for watching